Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to take a look at the biggest criticism against source generators and try to address that and that is how much longer it can make your compilation time because source generators are a form of metaprogramming added in .NET 5 which inspects your code so you effectively write code that looks at your code and writes extra code during compile time and all that goes into that final assembly as part of that process so obviously if you have code that needs to take a look at your code and write code that would balloon the compilation time so how much more that can be and is it something you should be worried about we're going to take a look at this in this video the other concern is how bigger your final assembly your final DLL or EXE can be after that process but I think that's a way smaller percentage of people complaining for that so we're gonna take a look at that just a little bit but we're gonna focus on the time it adds into compilation time if you like the of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsas.com and before I move on I just want to thank you so 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 much for 100,000 subscribers it is an insane milestone. It's insane to see six figures on my subscriber dashboard. Thank you so very much. And actually, last week I ran two videos where I was offering you a 20% discount against everything on my website, nickchapsas.com, with discount code 100K. This was just for the first 200 of you, and you smashed that. So for that reason, I'm adding 50 more usages to that discount code. So if you want to be one of the few last people who get to use that discount code, now is the time, 50 more usages, and that's it, it's gone. So thank you, thank you so much for subscribing, and thank you so much for sticking with the channel. Now back to the video. So let's take a look at what I have in this project, and really, I don't really have anything. This is just a console application, but there is a crucial thing that I want to show you. This is using .NET 7. In fact, I'm on .NET 7 Preview 4. And the reason for that is because I want access to the regex source generators that are being added in .NET 7. And the reason for that is because regex source generators read the pattern and they build code around the regex pattern. And that code can be quite a long piece of code depending on the pattern. So it will allow me to show you how much slower it can be with bigger and smaller patterns just by using one source generator. So that's why I chose to do this. Now keep in mind, this is still technically in preview. I mean, source generators have been out for a while, but the regex one is fairly new, so it is still being optimized. But in the extreme examples that we're gonna see, I don't think there's much you can do to optimize that. But in any case, all I wanna do first is show you two things. First, I have a console here, and I'm going to be running .NET build C release to build my code. And the reason why I do that is because I want to produce a release build, not a debug build of my code base. Now, when I do .NET build, this is when the source generator will kick in, read my code and try to write extra code on top of that and put it in that final assembly. We're also going to be keeping an eye on this folder over here. This is where my code base lives. It's really two files. It's the csproj and the program.cs. So if I go ahead and I run this build, as you can see, it's going to create two things, an OBJ folder and a bin folder, and it's all in release mode, as you can see. And as you can see, it's producing a DLL of five kilobytes. Keep that five in mind. That's where we're starting. Now, every time I run my build, I will be deleting those objects to have a completely clean slate of the actual metric. But as you can see in this case, the build actually took 1.11 seconds. Now, I cleaned this, so there's nothing here as you can see, but if I run it again, I'm assuming this will be faster. And that's because between build to build, the performance seems to be getting better if you run them close to each other. I'm assuming there's some back-end caching kicking in, but also because compilation is a pretty lengthy process with a lot of components behind the scenes, um, you can have run-to-run -run variance between, I don't know, 0 0.01, 0 0.03 seconds. So keep that in mind. So that's where we are right now, 1.08 around that area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the first source generator here. So we're going to say regex extra vaganza because we're going to add a lot of stuff here. And the way you add the regex source generator is you make this class partial and then you add the regex generator attribute here and you say public partial and then regex is what you return and then the type of regex in this case is going to be the uh, us phone number um, and if some of that regex is wrong don't worry it doesn't really matter uh, what matters is the actual compilation i just yoinked the regex patterns from some website it could be wrong i didn't write them 
I cannot write regex, so there's that. But yeah, this is how you implement the regex source generator. And now if I go ahead and copy this from my other screen over here, and I paste it here, then this is presumably the US phone regex. I don't know. But if I now go ahead and pull those two things here and do a .NET build C release, then as you can see, we had an increase. Now, this is the same as the first execution we had, which was um, 1.11 seconds. Uh, and as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and delete those files again and run it again. And now we get 1.07, this small optimization I talked about. So just with one source generator, there isn't really a noticeable difference here. And just to show you the code generated behind the scenes for this pattern, I'm going to use .peak, which is a JetBrains um, project, which is free to use for everyone. And I can go in the source generator, performance, regex, extravaganza. And, and as you can see, this is the code generated by that one single line of code. So what the source generator is doing is it's taking a look at the pattern and then it's building code, as you can see, to match that pattern. Very, very efficient code with spans and slices and a lot of other things that go way over my head. But what's important to understand is that eventually all this compiles to a singleton that this method is pointing at. And this singleton is over here. So this is simple and all, and we didn't really notice a difference in compile time. But what if, let's say I just grab a lot more source generators, let's say I think those are um, eight or seven, yeah, seven, uh, and I instead run this, what will happen here? And for the cleaning, we can also do the .NET clean thing, and this will uh, remove all the relevant bin uh, and object stuff as well. Um, but in any case, I can go back now and do the build again. And as you can see, there is a slight increase, presumably if I run it again. So if I clean it and I build it, then as you can see, there isn't much of a difference here. And that's with seven different source generators. If I go to dot peak again and I click on that and close it and re-click so it actually refreshes, as you can see, this is all, I'm, look, I'm just scrolling. This is all code that the source generator writes. It's a lot of code, like it's many lines, but it doesn't really affect our build. And again, this is nothing to sneeze at. Regex source generators can be very, very lengthy. How lengthy? Well, let's go ahead and grab an extra one. This is the email RFC 5322, which is the regex that validates email. This is the simple version, by the way. Like we're gonna take a look at the abomination that is 822. Uh, but this is the simple regex for email validation. And if I go now here and I do the cleaning, so all the object related stuff and all the bin related stuff are deleted and I build again. Now it looks like we added more. I can do it again. In fact, I can do it in a single command. I can say uh, clean and then build. So let's do that. And yeah, I mean, there is an increase. And as you can see, we're, the more we run it, the more it's, it looks optimized. But there's clearly something there. There is some performance degradation, especially comparing it to the very first version that had nothing. If I go ahead and I comment out everything here and I run it again, 1.05, which is less. Now, obviously, that's not something you should be worried about. I don't think that anyone is worried about 0.05 of a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build the one with the email version, which again is like 0.05 slower uh, and go to dot peak and show you the code generated for that. It, it is a lot like this is where it starts. It starts here and anything below that is code written for email validation. Like I'm not even taking the piss. This is insane how much it is. And still all that happens in 0 0.05 of a second but how slow can it actually get in a what i imagine to be the worst case scenario for this regex source generator well the worst case scenario i believe is the rfc 822 for email validation how bad is this well i'm gonna start scrolling like this is where the optimized version uh, is of email validation and the uh, just keep going this is all rfc 822 like this is it's still going still going and now it's done so just to visualize this 
I'm going to bring in the actual regex for the RFC. So as you can see here, this is the actual thing. It's nuts. Anyway, so let's go ahead and build this now. I'm going to run the clean release and build release and see what impact this monstrosity has to the build. Yeah, I took four seconds. That's three seconds more than what we had. And just to show you what this generates in uh, .peak, I'm going to double click on that. I hope it loads. Okay, it's loaded. I, I, I don't think I can describe to you how much code this wrote. Like, this is, this is where it starts. So let me just go to the beginning. That's nuts that this is actually an RFC. So this, which if I use my tool, starts here. From here until here, this is code written for that single RFC. If I am to go to, can I go to end and see how many lines this is? Uh, I cannot see it here. Let me just paste it in Visual Studio Code. So 27,000 lines of code and added three seconds. It makes sense. There's a lot of code here. But this is basically the worst case scenario. So can it slow you down? Uh, sure. But how many source generators will write 27,000 lines of code? Maybe you have the use case. Maybe you need to worry about this. But as you can see, most of them don't go nowhere near that. And I do not believe that it's something you should worry about. .NET itself will have source generators that are very, very efficient. I think the biggest worry that you should have is that people who write third-party source generators are very, very smart about how they write them and make sure they optimize them as much as they can. I'm not worried against the ones that Microsoft writes, like the Regex one, like the JSON one, like so many others are coming out. I'm way more worried about, you know, me and anyone else who writes open source code, who makes packages and can write some code that can really, really slow down your build. I should also point out that this now generated a 210 kilobytes file, that DLL, which is, I think, 200 more than the version that doesn't have this uh, source generator. So let's go ahead and rebuild this real quick. So clean and rebuild. Uh, 116 is where we are without that source generator. And as you can see, that's 22 kilobytes. So almost 200 kilobytes less. So my opinion with this, as with anything that has to do with performance, is collect, collect, collect. You want to measure, you want to collect data, you want to compare the best case scenario and the worst case scenario and see the edge cases too. Do not make speculations. Just get your hands dirty, try things out and see how that would affect your use cases. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.